Mr. Grobet, I thought I heard your voice. You must be looking for Conrad. Yes, I'm sorry that I dropped in unannounced. Is he home? He is. He's in his study. He'll be thrilled to see you. We're still on track, I presume. I should speak to your husband, Miss Davenport. It was a pleasure, Mr. Grobet. going with Daniel. Don't pretend for one second that you give a damn about that boy. A clue, perhaps, as to what the hell you're talking about? See for yourself. You have wormed your way into the very nadir of repugnance. Where did you get this? From whoever seems to be circling this family with an endless catalog of our sins. Sex with your son's girlfriend? Really, Conrad? You and I were divorced. Oh, Simon. so you say. It could have happened this morning, for all I know. Oh, what are you suggesting? That fidelity is one of your strong points? And as for Daniel, he had yet to commence his misguided relationship with dear Miss Davenport. A relationship you were allowed to proceed without mentioning your own pathetic lack of impulse control. You know, we can discuss how that theoretical father-son chat would have unfolded at a later date. Right now, we have more pressing problems. Our upwardly mobile son not only closed the no-corp deal, he managed to arrest a controlling interest in that company, seemingly without impediment. Which brings us to this little video that was so conveniently dispatched to you right in the midst of our current crisis. Now, what is the one entity with the only real ability to make and the motive to use this recording? The initiative. They know that as long as you and I remain united, we just might have the strength to ensure Daniel doesn't win that vote tomorrow. Victoria, they are trying to drive a wedge between us because they sense a change in the headwinds. They're going all in on Daniel, aren't they? Yeah. So if you must, you may unload your usual reign of hellfire on me once this ordeal is over. But until we prevail, I would advise you to focus your considerable powers on rescuing our son. Envisioning your future? And I didn't know that you were there. Undoubtedly. I used to do the very same thing. Plan out my path, uh, identify the obstacles, visualize the next six months, one year, five years. And as a result, all those thoughts became this. <laughs> You've made yourself quite at home at Grace Manor as of late. I do my best to keep out of your way. That's debatable. Still, I was hoping that you could assist me with a matter that's come to my attention. Yes. I had that reaction, too. Please, you must understand. Which part? That you seduced my husband? Or that you hid it from my all-too-trusting son? It happened one time. You had just fired me. It was a terrible mistake. On that, we are in violent agreement. He offered to help me, money, a job. Put yourself in the same position. Can you honestly say that you wouldn't have done the exact same thing? Oh, well, my judgment's not in question here, nor my future. And we both know it would be a simple pleasure to annihilate you. Please. Don't destroy what I have with Daniel. I love him. I swear I would do anything to put this right. I'm counting on it. Now, you know where Mr. Grabay is staying, don't you? Yes. Call him. Needless to say, you were right to keep Daniel in the dark this afternoon. The boy will soon run the company toward the ground, proving little use to the initiative. On the contrary. I think he handled himself very well today. Seemingly. But his vaulting ambition will bring him down as swiftly as it propped him up. What the hell was that for? Take your pick. <laughs> 